I just finished art school, or just almost finishing in 87. I think like in 86 or 85, I can't remember exactly. I, I moved to a little studio in Washington Avenue, right next to The Strand. I think it had just opened or was ready to open. Uh, my friend had a store called Heydays, so appropriate so, so, to what I was doing. It was dealing with the past and future, present. And, uh, and I rented his back shop and he was renting vintage clothes. I had had, before I, I moved in there, I had a very, um, very influential experience, which was when I volunteered for Crystal Surrounded Islands in 1983. Um, we were groupies, we became groupies of Crystal. I was, I think I was 16 or 17. And I had showed up in Pelican uh, Harbor, that's where it was called, where he was working from, with a friend of mine that had, I think, stolen a car or something like that. It was trouble all the time. And I was a little bit of trouble myself too. And we just showed up there, skipped school one day, high school, and suddenly I was handing water cups to people. I don't know how I did it, but I was a volunteer. And I saw Crystal from afar, never too close, and uh, the pink uh, fabric, the fuchsia fabric, which he said it was chosen because that was the color that best reacted to the light of Miami. And I thought he was so right. I still use it because of Crystal. I've never seen a color like that in my life. React to light so amazingly. And um, so we became groupies. There's this guy doing surrounding islands and it's art with fuchsia fabric in the environment, in nature, embracing it, living outdoors. And I said, oh, I, I am so going to do this for the rest of my life. So that stayed with me. But we went to visit. We found out that Crystal was staying in the Leslie Hotel, I think it was called, in, what, in Ocean Drive. And I, was, I went to Ocean Drive for the first time in my life in 82, 83. And I saw these Art Deco buildings falling apart, except a, co a couple of them. I think it was the Cavalier, the Leslie Hotel, and another one in a corner, I don't remember the name, that they were just renovated back to the Art Deco style. The murals were repainted. I eventually met the people that renovated this. And also the mid-century architecture, super Jetsonian. I was a kid of the Jetsons, I'm still a kid of the Jetsons, you can see all the Launch packs of the Jetsons back there, um, and I said, "Oh, I'm, I'm coming! I'm coming here when I finish school, when I figure out what I'm doing for the rest of my life." You could feel the vibrance in the streets, even though this was this was early on, and and it was beautiful. It was an artist that was Miami was his muse at that moment. And because Miami was his muse, he became my muse. And Miami became my muse. And in 86 or so, I kept in touch with the little that was going on there. Barbara Kapman and Lerner Herwith were preserving the Art Deco building and getting the national status for the historic uh, neighborhood. And I joined, I went back and I immediately joined the Preservation League with Barbara Katman and Lerner Horowitz, which to this day they were my heroes because they saw the power of architecture, the power of, of a language together and what a community could be. We tied ourselves to buildings. The police came many times, we filled windows and uh, with candles, like if these were living objects. The Senator Hotel was demolished. I still have those pictures. Developers came, bought buildings, exposed the interiors by leaving the windows open. We call it demolition by neglect. 
and uh, they didn't have to pay f very sh small fines for leaving the buildings open to to the, the, the damage of nature and then these buildings will collapse or either will have to be demolished be because of neglect. So we found out all those tricks and save a lot of buildings. But um, within that, people that were moved by these forces, and architecture is a big force, people were moving to Miami, Miami Beach. There was a thriving, I get goosebumps, of a, a Jewish community. I remember people saying back then that they were, I remember watching David Letterman, was he called? All those old people in Miami and, this, and that they went to Miami to die. And they, they, were, they came to Miami Beach to live. Those people were living. They were dancing to Frank Sinatra in a moment. They were dressing the most, inspiring fashions, living in these rooms, preserved rooms that were either exactly like they were in the 20s or like they were in the 50s or in the 60s and they were dressing the part. It was a fantasy world with a lot of problems. And eventually when these people that I met them in their 70s, when they became a hundred, it was a different story. You know, it was sad. Um, but that was a very, very uh, intrinsical part of my for me as an artist was that community sitting in those chairs, enjoying their, their last years. A film was made, The Last Resort, very appropriate. My dear friend Gary Monroe used that name and they used it for the film. It was their last resort and I, I filled myself with their stories of the past. They were pretty much living in the present. They had no more choices. A lot of creative types came and joined in that feast. I remember roller skating while I had people dancing waltz next to me, elderly couples uh, that were in love with life. They were grateful for the little that they have. Mind you, this was a, a community that, that was not economically, uh, they, were, they were economically handicapped. And uh, before you know, you notice the, the, there were contemporary forces there expressing themselves. And you could see the shape of things to come. You couldn't see the shape of things to come. You could feel the shape of things to come, which I'm sure is similar to you when you were in a Promise. in Promise Town. That you can see a community that is being formed and 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 and, and uh, that was married to the past but open to the future. It was pretty much balanced. And you were working with very highly developed minds like Barbara Catman and Leonard Hurwitz. At one moment, Andy Warhol came. Uh, um, the director of the Preservation League back then gave him the tour. Uh, oh my God, what was her name? I remember. She eventually became the director of the Bass Museum. Uh, I had my birthday at the Strand, a 20 year old kid. And in one table was Paloma Picasso, David Hockney, uh, Ed Roche. Is it the 80s or early 90s? When, when was it, 20? Um, artists were expressing themselves everywhere. Uh, galleries started opening er in every corner of Miami Beach. Artist studios everywhere. The art center, which has survived and now is all light. This idea of community, and it was organic. It was enforced. Um, then eventually you have some of the most important voices of every discipline show up in Miami. Back in my speakeasy, I have my, my book, uh, Octavio Paz. He came to talk right across from my studio. Those are the things that were happening. I remember running when the lecture was finished with my book on hand. Not only me, 20 other youth like me running to have their book signed by Octavio Paz with goosebumps. That was the beach every week like that. I met 
iconic figures of film, uh, Audrey Hepburn at the Lincoln Theater. She came to talk on behalf of UNICEF. Um, I, I mean, go on, Kenny Sharp back then, of course, uh, Keith Haring opened the pop shop. And it was a community, like you said, we all know each other. Then you have all these places where you can express yourself. It's interesting because I have read plenty about Paris in the turn of the century, and it felt like that. And there was a place called the Paris Theater, and a lot of it happened there. And uh, you had the clubs, you had the bars, you have the greedy, you had the seedy, you had the sophisticated, you had the poor, you had the rich, you had the crime. And I also, now I think of Miami like that as well. It's like, here we go again. Paris, turn of the century in Miami again. The sense of community is less, but I will tell you this, I have, I'm very fortunate and grateful. Most of my group of friends is from that period, mm. from Luis Canales. If Barbara will be 120 now, we will still be friends. Um, I think what happened is the community helped shape the future. Miami didn't happen in a vacuum, it never did. There's a lot of history here from the 20s, from, from, from the Gables, from Coconut Grove. Contemporary story, there's a lot of Native American history here from the Tequesta. As a matter of fact, I think one of the first manuscripts ever written in a European language was here of Escalante. He was captured by the Tequestas and then rescued by the Spanish 30 years later and he wrote one of the first manuscripts in the New World 300 years ago, 400 years ago, in this part of the world. So there's a lot of history, just that we're troubled documenting it, or at least passing it in school. You know, we learn all these things in school here about national themes. Like, what about teaching somebody about why oranges grow in Miami, or why are the Mikusukis in the Everglades? And, why well, don't embrace literally the culture that is next, why your house is there. You know, I, th I see a problem with the education system in the States because they don't do that. I mean, I grew up with every knowing, every name of every cacique Indian that grew up in Puerto Rico and every fruit that I eat in my neighborhood, why? So stepping out of that and going back to the South Beach underground, I just don't think that it, it, it'll be very difficult to happen again. Um, it, it was important for many people. I think in part the reason why my work is loaded with layers and really pretty much informing collages is because this is the time before uh, the internet. This is that we were trying to organize our thoughts as much as we could. That's why I, I archive so much physically the material. This is the time because before I say, before Google tried to become our memory, we were having a memory by ourselves. So the way to organize that was with working with collage, with a lot of information in top layers and layers and layers. And, and, and that's part of, of my generation, I see it. I think perhaps that's part of, of my school. I think the architecture of my generation is very important that we talked about, the architecture of optimism. Enoch Perez is an artist, I think he's my age too, and he literally worked with architecture. Uh, highly influential. The, the beach was something, it didn't happen in a vacuum. Art Basel didn't come to Miami Beach because there was nothing here. Um, there's always have been plenty 